All right, so at this point, we've got our project. We can add classes, delete classes, no problem. And it's a, it's a, web, it's a web app, it's a website. So we want to implement the same thing in our Android app. Uh, so I've already put in what I've, <coughs> what I've done uh, with today's date. I put it into the network folder if you want a copy of my stuff there. And now uh, you also want a copy of the example project from Tuesday. And uh, that example project, um, we're going to import it into Eclipse and then work on it. So make sure you've got your, your example from Tuesday or your own work. And I'll close a few things here. Don't need this web browser. I'm going to leave Notepad open because I'm going to transfer some of this code from my web version into, into Eclipse. And then so I need to open up Eclipse. And as usual, we'll do File Import. We'll import the Android project from existing code, the example project from the desktop. So make sure you import that. All right, so the example is imported. We don't need to edit anything in the index file, except for what we forgot to do last time at the very end of the day. A few of you left, so uh, then we figured it out, and now we'll talk about it here. The whole pouch DB thing was not working in our Android app because we forgot to have that reference to that script. So let's edit the index file. And here's what we're missing. Uh, up on the top, on line 20. We'll add a new line 20. We have the pouch DB file in the project, but the index page doesn't know about it. That's why when we, we, we had all of this working perfectly, last time we added it to the project and it didn't work and we ran out of time. Well, that's, the, uh, that's our problem. So up on line 20, let's add the script tag. And then we'll say src pouch db dash 3 dash dot 0 dot 6 dot min dot js. And that's what unlocks the ability to do all of this within our Android app. Make sure you're writing this in your index file. Uh, of your Android app, number one. Since we never got it to actually work, some of us on, on the phone, you could do run configuration and run it on your virtual or real device and see it working. So once again, check that this is your proper code. The dots and the dashes matter, of course. I'm going to save and run that on my uh, virtual device. Manage classes, add a class.
get to feedback, show classes. That's what we didn't get to last time. We had all of that code and then anticlimactic. And that's the one thing we, we forgot. So make sure you add that and then we'll go on to be able to do the deletion. And it's going to be copy and paste mostly with a couple of nuances that I found were, uh, were needed to be implemented. You should also populate your your app with a few classes to fully test it. So it should work now, and I've got some classes, so here's what we need to do. Um, all of this is working via JavaScript, so we will open our Kodika ext.js file. First we'll make that field and that button appear below our table, so this will be line 62. Make sure you're in the Kodika ext file. And then from Notepad, I'm going to copy line 60. So line 60 is the, is the line that makes the input field and the delete button appear. We're going to copy that. And at about the same place, we will add it in Eclipse. In Eclipse, it's over on line 62. Is this going to be another case where the on click is not going to work? That's right. So, on click was working on the web version, but on click is not working for us here because everything we need to do for pouch lives inside of the device ready on device ready function so on click will not work so we're going to remove completely the whole on click and then from my research and all the documentation says that we will then be able to access it of course the previous way that we did it which is listed down here line 66 but actually that didn't work because what we're, what we're getting here is dynamic generated content that is not part of the DOM when we need to access it. So I have a fix for it, but all we need here is to simply say there's a button and there's an input box, and that's all we need at this point. So we don't need an ID or anything like that? We will then uh, copy and paste the function, delete classes, and then we will implement the way to access that function. So there's my code so far. I'm going to go back to Notepad and then copy your whole chunk of code that is the delete classes. And of course, very careful that you select all of it. In my case, it's line 64 to 84, so 20 lines of code. Make sure you grab it all. Don't forget the last closing curly brace, especially. So from your notepad, copy the whole delete classes, 64 to 84. <coughs> and we'll paste it in the same place in Eclipse. Let's see here. Right after the table of classes, so that'll be line 66. <laughs> Can you 
take out the on click button? Just the part, just the attribute that says on click. On, on click equals delete classes. And the delete classes? Yes, so look up here. We remove the whole part that says on click and delete classes. Right, so then I'm going to save that. And in order for this button to access that function, we have to do a little bit more, slightly different JavaScript. This is JavaScript delegation. So we're going to add here. Uh, these two worked, but these two work because they are referencing buttons that are already in the HTML file the moment we start to run the whole project. This button up here does not exist in the HTML document until we click Show Classes. So in my research, this method did not work. Here's what we need to do. New space here, line 100. It's going to start off similar, but then very different. It's going to have the dollar, open, close, um, parentheses, and then dot on, open, close, parentheses, and semicolon. Similar here, dollar sign, open, close, parentheses, dot click, open, close, parentheses. This one is a little bit different. What we are referencing first in the HTML document is actually, in quotes, going to be body. The body of the document. But then, specifically, inside of these parentheses, which I'm going to break apart to the next line, on uh, allows us to check for different events. Up here we're only checking for a click event. On it could check for a variety of others and it gives us the ability to also target a specific element in the document. So we need to again inside of on in quotes say click we are looking for a click but comma when this button is clicked, so in quotes, button, the tag button, we're saying somewhere in the body of this project a button was just clicked. And that's our workaround that doesn't, th that wouldn't work the way before here because this applies to a button that already exists on screen when the project loads. This new button does not exist until we click Show Classes. So this was the workaround that I found. After this, comma. Don't you need an ID? Nope. There's no ID on it. There's no ID on it. No. Plus, it's the only button on the page which helps. Exactly. <laughs> There's only one button that we're using so far. So this button that we clicked on on the body works. Um, this this on. Then we have a problem. <laughs> but there's no multiple. I think those we've got them via data roles. Remember, we've got hrefs and their data role buttons, so that it's not affecting. Because here, what we're, what this is saying, this is jQuery. The documentation says look for a button tag, not a data role, a button. Different. So then um, the last item here is we need a, uh, a function. So we'll do function. And this has its own open and close curly braces, which I will divide up right there. And finally, inside of this function is where we can call delete classes. Uh, 
All right, so that's the big difference. We're accessing that particular button in a different way, and it would make sense to use an ID and all of that, and I tried it. I was up until midnight getting all of this to work last night, over the last two days, and I was doing it the way we've been, we've been doing it, and reading a lot of Stack Exchange, and reading the jQuery documentation, and this way seems to work. But yes, if we have more than one button on the screen, we do get into a problem. So we'll have to research how to get that to work, because all the documentation said, all you do is this, and it wasn't quite working. But those were not examples running inside of an Android app. So maybe we will break ground and find the real answer. So I'm going to save that and run it. Manage classes. Show classes. One, two, three. Delete. <coughs> Deleted it. So the uh, the delete class is as is from the from the website. What has changed is line sixty two, where we don't need an ID for that button or an on click. Or that is, we're not using them. And then at the bottom here, this is brand new, but obviously not very different from what we've done before. All right, so make sure that's all spelled right. Raise your hand if it worked. Okay, good. I think I've read that the on method is considered to be the newer way of handling things in jQuery. Yes, that's what I was seeing. That uh, there is also, uh, you know, a selector dot delegate, but it said that that's one's deprecated. One. That's exactly. Deprecated. So if they want on now, they recommend on. But their examples weren't always very clear. It's that hard to really understand all the mm -hmm. ramifications of it. All right. I suppose that instead of pulling on the body, we might have a div with an ID or something like that. And if we had a button that was within the side of that, we could pull it more specifically uh, referred to I was trying that and it didn't seem to work. Okay. Um, I tried it, you know, adding the div right here. Yeah, but that's not in the DOM yet. Uh, it has to be something that's true. already there. That's true, yeah. That's what the issue is going on. So we'd have to have it elsewhere. So that would be how to target it a little better. Mm -hmm. Kind of like those placeholders that we have where we're yeah. using the interface. Like the know. message. Mm -hmm. Oh wow! All right. So anyone need a little help? Let me bring my code up again here. I'll be with you one moment. <coughs> Instead of having to fill an 
Where some of my scanner software that seem to uh, you know, it has buttons on that so it runs software so I get like I just choose up a whole process like that. And so I have to look for a new uh, install and stuff. Machine. You know, I started doing that at the beginning of the class, but it apparently has some resistance because uh, when I went back to my uh, uh, to my apps, I was surprised to see a command line here. Yeah, I've not installed it. I didn't install from uh, Eclipse today. Right, uh, but it's because you're not going to see. Yeah, that's when you have some persistence. I thought that each time I started it. The instance it would just yeah. oh, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 sure. Yeah. Um, that's interesting. Yeah. Although sometimes it'd be nice to pull it out and start with a fresh one. Yeah, it would have been more obvious if they had custom icons. But that's, that's, and indeed, we should have renamed the uh, old business. Okay, maybe we might do that for the next part three. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have any of my notes, but 
Let's do one thing. You want to go to help install? Okay. And then select the three things. And then start typing here in the filter JavaScript. Just wait a moment, it will filter itself in a moment and it will show you. Thank you. 
change the way you do the output. Change something.
really in the meantime to punch down to his face, which this is what we see here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Space on JavaScript comes together. Well, yeah. Well, um, I, I can't even have classes. Did it ever work? I haven't had it work in here. That was installing that extra, yeah. All right. So if it's working, we're seeing. I'm I'm running this on my virtual device. And I can also run it on my real device. But my real device is uh, an Android, I think it's 4.1.
And from what I've been reading on, on Pouch's documentation and my own, uh, troubleshooting it, Pouch doesn't work on older devices. So, see I've got here a 4.1 and the project, I tested it and it works on 4.1. But I have this other phone uh, which is a 2.2 I think or 2.3, it does not work there. So later on we'll talk about, in the next class, we'll talk about changing the target of our app. What devices can it work on? Right now it works in theory on the range between 2.2 and 4.4. But actually, now that we've implemented Pouch, it won't work on the older devices, so it wouldn't be a good idea to release an app that we know doesn't work on older devices. We're going to have to exclude them. That'll be, on, that'll be later on when we start to talk about the Android Manifest, a very important file here that we'll get into detail on the third part of the class. Is that something we're going to have to manually determine uh, what range of versions of Android or is there a, a tool that will uh, uh, look at what we've included and, uh, and determine the uh, version? I stumbled upon that answer uh, by reading the documentation of Pouch and also trying it out on my different devices. So um, I think it depends on what you're trying to accomplish and what uh, extra you know libraries you're bringing in. Uh, I don't know if there's like a, an actual you know, tester for everything because there's just so much to test for. So you might not have an older device, but you can always create virtual devices running the older versions. So that's sometimes difficult to work with, and that's why later on we'll also talk about the, the beta testing groups and all of that. Uh, so that'll be in the part three of the class, but we want to do some things to wrap up our project um, for this class. For example, um, you know, we're going to remove some of this functionality that was just kind of proof of concept. We'll do that in a bit. But I, I don't quite want to leave this table looking like this. It could be styled a little bit better. We'll just do some very simple styling of this table. Um, for example, I wanted to fill up the width of my, uh, of my screen. Right now it's only filling up to the size of the content inside of it. So if I was to add, you know, longer names, there. If I was to add longer names over here, it would grow to accommodate the name too much. Right? So I want to deal with the um, with the table taking up a little bit more space. So we'll do that here inside of um, the JavaScript. We'll just format the table a little bit. Uh, we'll try it this way. The table appears, the table is formed on line 54, right here. I want the table to take up the full width. So let's go to line 54. We'll add style. Single quotes, of course, because we the whole thing is wrapped up in double quotes. And we'll say with 100%. So that'll grow and shrink to the container, which will be our viewport, which is the size of our screen. So That's right. Well, on a table at line. Uh, Depending on the content inside. Yeah. You can do a max width though with that property, and that's a little, a little harder. Okay. So this is again figuring out good user input. Perhaps there's a class that's 200 <laughs> characters long. We want to have a way to perhaps only save the first 15 characters. So again, that requires more of this uh, you know, user experience and information architecture. But at this point, let's see what this looks like if we add this property here. So I'm going to save it and run it.
And I do have the really big name. So let's say someone doesn't go overboard with a huge name. Well, there are CSS things you can use to resolve that. There's a one that lets you uh, break long words and things like that. And yeah. I used that last night for, for something. Uh, so Did it work well for you? Yeah, it, because uh, they put some bogus input that was you know, just random characters in there just to see how it break the formatting. And so it, uh, it did handle it. They were pleased with the result. I did use something like that for another project. I'm blanking on the actual code for it, so if you can look it up, we might oh, sure. implement it. But notice here, everyone, uh, if it worked for you, now your table uh, takes up a little bit more space upon the screen. So I'm on my devices, it, the text is more, it just drops it off. <laughs> it's right there. But, but if you have spaces in your long text, it will break. It will word wrap it. Yeah. This was an example that there is no spaces, so it was not going to word wrap it. The the property, the CSS property is word hyphen wrap colon break hyphen words. Break word. Let's give that a try. This is a uh, supposed to break. Do, it's supposed to force a uh, word wrap, like in the case that I had a moment ago, which is three, 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 three. That's a lot of text. Normally, you wouldn't see that, but there should be a way to break it arbitrarily based on the width of the of the table. In our case, it's sort of the hammer and bandsaw method of doing. <laughs> yes. Didn't do anything in your case. The moral of the story is don't type long names. <laughs> the overflow properties that you use also, you know, to uh, give it some addition. Like you said, uh, we talked this by the last week somewhere. Now, what if you change them to a uh, max width property instead of width properties? Let's see. So, max width 100. All right, so um, we can figure out a little bit for that. But this is obviously a case where who's going to type something that long? There are probably going to be a few spaces in there, and we'll be OK. Um, but what I want to do is over here, again. And you can't score this, right? No. No. no we can't. Question. Oh. Word do doing the word wrap break oh, on the yeah, TD? On the TD. Oh, on the TD. Oh, yeah. On the TD. In oh, instead of this one? Yeah. Yeah, instead of okay. oh, definitely. Let's give that a try there. So um, cut that out there and instead we want it. Um, you don't want to apply to all TDs, so you don't need to just in case. 
But yeah, so we would do a, we would do it for here and here and here. So line 56. Um, that's where you can add the style there. So notice we're styling that particular TD that cell. Yeah, because we've got there's the first column, then the next line is the second field, and the third line is the third field. So yes, just to be sure, I'm going to add the same thing. For all of these, because we could have long names on any one of those three. And obviously adding it to one of them would only apply to one of them. Did it, was that conceptual, Kira, or did it actually work for you? Did it work for anyone? It works on my virtual. Oh. Did you keep the, did you keep the word wrap up on the table too? Or no. did you move it? What's that? Ruben, did you keep it there or did you? No, I put in the TVs. Only the TDs like this. So, what about then the THs? So for class, it goes introduction to, and then breaks, and then Marvel Comics for that's a class. Hmm. I think you would rather have the word wrap, so you have all the space. I know I've done this something like this on a long string of numbers where there were no spaces. And it did do the, the break, but it was obviously a different implementation. But, uh, yeah, it may have to do with the way the HTML is rendered inside the phones and, and the yeah. others. It might be different than the desktop browser. In the grand scheme of things, perhaps it's not such a big deal, but obviously us OCD perfectionists want it all to work perfectly. But I'm going to say this is a little thing. I think we've done what we could with it. Let's look at some other things um, to kind of polish things up a little bit. Um, so I'm gonna have that long name, and I'll remove it a little later. But you don't need a big between the various columns. It's a different between this. Say that again. You don't need a big between the uh, various columns. It automatically puts it. The break. Yeah. In, in your form, you have a break and the DR. Uh, again, let's move on because we could obviously be really sweating over every nuance and I want to look at other things also. So what I want to do is remember as a proof of concept we made our app take a photo. We didn't really do anything with it because you know what could we do with this kind of app that takes a photo? Um, so let's go in and um, comment out these buttons on the home screen because they don't, you know, really do that much. Uh, so that's over on the index file. Let's go back to the index file. Over on line uh, 69 to 74, that's where we've got those buttons showing up. Now, uh, what I'm going to say is, what I would ideally do is on my final code remove all the extraneous stuff. For the moment, I'm going to comment it out because I'm going to make a copy of that code on a separate file in case I want to go back to it at some point. But when we get to the final version of things, we're going to cut out all the stuff we don't need. Every byte, you know, a penny saved is a penny earned. Apply that to bytes. So. Uh, let's comment out. Uh, I'm going to start from line 68. Remember, comments in HTML 
are the uh, exclamation point type, and the ending of it will go there. So that's something I'm going to remove later. Line 66 we'll need to remove also. That's that secret button. Probably even more important are the libraries that are sitting inside the, uh, the JavaScript folder or wherever uh, for bringing in the... Uh, well, I guess that's that's probably part of PhoneGap. So, uh, no, actually, th this one is not. We're not really referencing that. That was coming from our original example template, so we will also take care of that in a bit. But you're right, we do want to go through our different folders and everything and just make sure we clean out things that we don't need. I'm going to remove those buttons. Now up here, we kind of forgot about this. Uh, I suppose we could still use it for some purpose. Uh, way back last month, we when we were designing the whole project in um, in Kodika, remember the Kodika web editor, we created this grid that would hold that could hold buttons side by side and all of that. So that's we still got that line fifty seven to sixty two that creates a two column division invisible division on the screen. We never really used it. It's a little like a table. Yeah. It allows you to divide up the screen sort of like a table in, in the old days. Mm, we didn't really use it, so I'm going to comment that out, line 57 to 62. Now notice if you've got the HTML plugin installed, when you start a tag, it then wants to close it for you, so be careful there because it closed my comment right away, even though I want it down here, which happened also down on the, on the button. And I'll indent that stuff, and I think I told you guys about this trick. If you want to indent everything at once, you can just kind of select it willy-nilly, and then tab it, and it all tabs consistently. Shift-Tab brings it back. We did something at line 106, art cal. That's when we were trying to figure out that side uh, side menu, I think. Is that the panel? The panel. Um, I think it's related to the panel, but why would it be commented out? We did it over here under panel. That's the actual panel itself. Art cal. Yeah. We need to figure out what that one did because it seems to be deactivated already. Oh, this is, uh, I think this is when we were making an icon up here on screen. Oh, in the header, yeah. That's when we were making it uh, so that the, the screen itself you know, over here in the art screen, it had a button right there to make a side panel appear, rather than having a button here for art calendar. Yes. We never did add that content there, but I'll do it for you later when we start the next class. I'll put in some content for us. Oh, I remember one thing that I've been finding annoying that we forget to remove. When we go to customize and to add our own name, it's going to vibrate and beep twice, which was superfluous. That was, again, just a proof of concept. So that was over on customize. We'll have to do that in the JavaScript in a bit. So 
I'm going to save that index file and let's go over to Codica EXT. Here it is on line 207. We made it vibrate, which actually also makes it beep. That one I will remove completely, not comment it out because it, it was never that useful. Hmm? Alert dismissed. You just took out the vibrate there? Yeah. Under your customized function, line 207, just remove the whole call to that function vibrate. Okay, so we're going to need to eventually clean out a lot of this Codica file. All right, so here's how here's how we're going to do this. Um, I want a copy of my work. I feel safer with a copy of my work up to this point, and then we'll go in and really prune the hedges. So what I will do is I will exit Eclipse completely. You don't have to close your ABD. But our whole project is there, and it's up to that point where we, you know, made those comments and such. And as I said, I, what I really want to do is remove everything that really is not useful. And that includes other folders that we didn't really touch. So I'm going to make a copy of this folder as is. And the trick that you can do in Windows, actually, is if you right-click and drag, so I'm pressing right-click, and I'm dragging it over somewhere. It'll give you the menu so that you can copy. So right click and hold and drag, and that gives you the menu. So we've got copy, and then the original one, or the one that's in Eclipse. So this copy, actually, I'm going to call it backup. And that's my project that I want to keep safe somewhere. And then we'll go in and actually prune the hedges of example. Yes? In our um, example account, um, we have primarily three main pages, the art, the computer, and each of those pages has an app section at the top. Mm -hmm. And that has a lot of HTML code for each of those pages. And it's all the same because we wanted a consistent look. Mm -hmm. Is that the type of thing that we could take all that HTML and move it into Codica and use a function to, like we did here with the table where we could actually build all the all those all that HTML for the nav buttons in a function and then we would just have to call that function when we load each page and that way we wouldn't have to repeat that code three times. It could be implemented like that, definitely. That you know, using inner HTML. Or, 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 um, I don't think it would be appreciably slower. Uh, but actually from what I've been reading in Cordova and, and PhoneGap, that issue often comes up. And there are some implementations in there that I haven't read completely to process it all, but they are giving you um, examples and instructions of how you could implement that. So it is in the uh, uh, Cordova documentation how to deal with that, because it is. It is, a, it is some redundant code, and the more we can save, the better. Um, so I, I want to look at that myself also to see what it says. Yes. Related to that, I struggled with it for a couple hours last night. Um, I was uh, 
using uh, some code to, to bring in menus for that very purpose. And uh, uh, for a while, I was finding that my the list items were showing flashing on the screen momentarily and then disappearing as if the uh, CSS couldn't uh, keep up as it was going from page to page. Hmm. Uh, it turned out, and I was trying to find all these methods to uh, get rid of it, none of it worked. It turned out that I had been put, installing the, um, the bottom menu uh, twice, and the second one was uh, so when I removed it, uh, things worked. But that business of uh, showing unstyled uh, uh, content, content. Is, is, a, is a danger in that, uh, in that technique. Hmm. Okay. Because then that kind of breaks the illusion that, that turns back the curtain that, okay, this is an app and it's based on HTML. Not that that's bad, but then you'll see kind of the seams showing sometimes. So the better uh, native uh, um, styling and experience that we have, the better. So I, I am curious to see what the documentation says about how to implement multiple menus a little more effectively. At this point, you should have a copy of your project as a safe backup. We're going to leave that and not touch it. And we'll go back into Eclipse now. And I exited Eclipse because sometimes, you know, the uh, if a file is open in another application, it won't let us access the files. So it's a little safer to close Eclipse completely and then do what we just did and then get back to into Eclipse and now we'll continue to to, uh, to fix things up. So this time now that I have a copy on another file, I, we will go in and delete stuff that is superfluous. So let's start with the index file again. That's fine. I, I had closed mine and then closed Eclipse, I so it remembered your last Eclipse. open files. Yeah. I just closed Eclipse. <laughs> yeah. All right, so... Yes. Hmm. Not sure what to say about that. Let me uh, just hold on a bit and then I'll, I'll come and help you out because, well, if you saved all of that stuff to a flash drive, I guess what you could do. Yeah, but then save it to a flash drive just in case. And possibly restart your computer, it'll set you back a little bit, but uh, at least your stuff will be safe and then you probably work. What's that? <coughs> yeah, check on that actually. Did you rename? Because you know, notice what I did. Uh, I left alone the copy. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, I'm try restarting. Nope. This this copy this backup right here is on the desktop. Eclipse doesn't know anything about it. All right. So uh, comments that are perhaps uh, informational for yourself, you can leave those if you're going to work with the project later. You want to remember what you did. And I want to go in and remove, for example, okay, now we're not going to use this. So remove that block about the the, um, the divider here, this little table, 57 to 64. Delete that. And we've got line 61, which is that secret button. Remove line 61, and I'll also remove the line itself just to clean it up a bit. Next is that big chunk with all of those camera buttons, 62 to 69, I'll remove that. And the line it was on. Line 90. I'll take that out and it's line.
I think that's it. So we've uh, slimmed it down to 290 lines of code on our index. Then we'll go to the Kodika extra file. There's a bunch of things we'll remove here. A lot of it has to do with the camera. For example, right at the top, we've got two variables related to our picture, so it removes lines 3 and 4. And we know that in this file we will be putting our custom code here, so actually I'm just going to change line 1. Since it's a comment, uh, you could write anything you want here. For example, today's date. And any notes. I'll do line six. I'll keep that one because I might... something might happen later on and I don't have that console log output. I'll remove 6, but you're right over here. We don't need the picture source destination type, so that's lines 7 and 8. And clean up a little bit of space here. That was line 9. Mm -hmm. Line 60, we've got that alert that was popping up. I'm about to delete a class. There's a huge chunk. After the on device ready, which starts on line 99. We've got photo data, photo URI, capture photo, capture photo edit, get photo, open URL. Okay, so we'll go down from 99 to 168. So all of that code was making our camera work. It should start at about 99, and then 168. So we've got that function we made, open URL, that's fine. Dismissed. Alert dialog dismissed. I might have used that somewhere as a proof of concept. Let me get back to that one. We might not be using that one anymore. We've got the custom alert. Oh, I see. It's right there. Alert dismissed. Vibrate. So we've got that custom function that appears. We never use it. We never use it. So, okay, I'm going to take out now the new 103 to 118, the alert dismissed function, and the show alert.
we got this vibrate, which actually I did want to use for something when we um, when we remove a class. I just want a quick little buzz for feedback, uh, but I don't want it to beep. So inside of your vibrate function, I'm going to remove the navigator notification dot beep. That's line 107 now. Navigator.notification.beep, and I just want a little buzz, half a second. That's 500 milliseconds. Change your comment if you want. Yes. I write for 0 0.5 seconds. Then we've got a bunch of uh, comments here that we were, comments and code that we were creating to implement this in different ways, and we eventually ended up with local storage. So I'm going to remove lines 109 and 10. Those, that's a comment for the old way of storing the name. I'll remove that, but I will keep the comment from, uh, to remind me what it is later, what, the, what local storage is is doing. By now we should remember, but you might forget, you know, when you come back weeks or months later. But I'll remove lines 109 and 110 inside the customize function. And then also Uh, 111 and 112, which is again a reference to the old code, the old way of doing it. And uh, that too. Okay, so we have the JavaScript way and then the jQuery mobile way. Yeah. yeah, this is the jQuery way. And actually, I'm surprised that it would work because you have it as a class instead of an ID. The first example is pulling off of an ID, the second one is pulling off of a class. Yeah, we had that working somehow. I remember that's what the issue was because we've got it. We've got several. This is the one where it says, you know, welcome, Victor. And then on the computer screen, take a computer class, Victor. So we needed to do it as a class because the name would appear more than once. And we couldn't do inner HTML, so we had the method HTML. So I'll remove that old uh, element by ID. Mm -hmm. And when we were first talking about if else statements and true and false and all of that, we've got those notes there. I guess we can leave that. But we'll remove this part, which it is doing nothing. If we remove that, and that one is the else. You just make it not equal to undefined, and then you don't have to have one else. Hmm. Yeah. Not equals no else. Sure. And remove that. And I suppose in order to save those precious bytes, let's give that a try. Uh, so here we've got, uh, we were checking. Um, for truth that if local storage, if there is no username, if it's undefined, nothing was really happening, or else that means it is defined. So that would happen. 
So we'll make a little change here, line 116. We'll add the exclamation point for not. So if it's not undefined, that means that we do have a value, so we'll move the welcome message up there. I think that might be a question of an order of operations. I was thinking of the exclamation point equal comparator. Oh, I'm sorry. Down here. Oops, up here, right? This one? Yeah. Otherwise, it might be somehow comparing not local storage unit name, whatever that means, hmm. before you either compare something to the other. Hmm. All right, so let's give this one a try. Remove that exclamation point at the beginning. And instead, we're saying not equal to undefined. So that means we wouldn't need that whole else section. That's right, take out one equal and then put the exclamation point. And then move the part that says welcome message up to that right below true. And then we'll delete the else section. And then that whole last section was just another implementation of making the, the name display after we customized. Uh, so we'll remove that whole thing. There is everything after the load name. That's why we've got the backup just in case. Yes. I've broken things in this kind of procedure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully there isn't something wrong here because I'm seeing from my highlighting, you know, I select here and it highlights the opening and closing of that function and I highlight here. And I highlight here, and it does that, but then I highlight load name, and it highlights like that. And I didn't see what it looked like before we changed this if-else, but um, that's why we would test it. Which line? 
let's see, 118, parentheses, um, I see the opening, doesn't hurt to check, but doesn't seem like it, and from my, from my quick testing of it, it seems to be still behaving. For that word wrap, I found the table dash layout equals fixed in the table tag. Might work. Hmm. If you have it, um, the word brace for the team text. You also have to have table um, table wrap equals fixed in the table. Let's check that in a moment. So what was that again over here? Table dash layout. In the table itself. Right. You have to have, you have to have, well, what's that? I'll check that one moment. So, should this work? Let me, let me try it, and then, you know, the, the less code we write, the better, but let's just see if this works as is, and then we'll add it if we don't. And it might also be the different, uh, perhaps different Android uh, images. Okay, so that's weird. Let me try that again. So over here, so in addition to table layout fix, what else is it? I have um, in the TV, the style is text normal. So in the TD itself, mm -hmm. text. So you have to have the word wrap and the text. Okay, text dash wrap normal. It it could it could matter yes. Uh, let me do it the same way you've got it then. I'll put it text wrap first, and you have it on all three of your TDs. <laughs> yeah, mine I use width equals 100%, not max width. Okay, let me try that because it didn't work here either. Oh, yeah, I don't have that. Crowdsourcing. Okay, so here seems to be the one that we want, finally. Um, this is back on the uh, JavaScript file. Uh, we've got on line 46, which is where the table is set up. We've got width 100%, not max width, just the width 100% and then semicolon, table dash layout, colon fixed. Number one. Then on the three TDs that could possibly be too big, we've got uh, a text wrap and the word wrap we had previously. So put word wrap a second. Text dash wrap colon normal semicolon, and then the word wrap. And then the same thing for the three TDs. So we'll make sure you write that. Of course, I'll be putting this into the the Z drive if you want a copy of it. The order? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm 
can seem like they're in the same position on the cascade. Although I did put them in the CSS class, so I made a class for myself. So. Okay. But then in the in the other order besides this one. Yeah. Okay. So there we go. That finally looks good. Of course we can still worry about putting in like alternating what do they call it? Zebra zebra styling it where every line is different so that it's more readable. But yeah, there's some interesting ways to do that. Yeah. Pseudo selectors and such. But uh, at least it looks like that. So um, very good. So okay, our index and our JS file are cleaned up. Seems like we want to clean up some things here in our actual project. I guess we should look at dir at some point, but we'll get to that. Um, here on our actual file list here, we can remove a few things, extraneous things like spec.html. We can remove that completely. That comes with. Yeah, common. Uh, unfortunately, that thing doesn't work on the system. Oh, really? <laughs> oh. <laughs> it overwrites on the system. Can't even read the text. There's always a dissenter. Uh, so here on uh, let's delete this spec file. This came with uh, our our cord our phone gap project in it. It's it's a proof of concept sort of thing. Uh, so here you can right click and we've got delete. We're just going to delete the whole file, this spec.html file in our www folder. Confirm. That spec.html was also using this folder, spec. So the folder spec, go ahead and remove that. It does not have all our stuff in it. Spec? No, we, have, assets. No, we haven't done anything with it. It's not. Or what the Jasmine? That is again. That's for um, the Jasmine is being accessed via uh, Helper JS, Index.js, and Spec HTML we just removed. And I and I've combed through these files, and it doesn't seem to be used anywhere meaningful. So I'm going to remove that Spec folder. This CSS folder is referencing index CSS, which used to be used when we first created our, uh, our project, our example project. So all of this stuff here, we never accessed it, index CSS. It was being accessed by a file that no longer exists because we overwrote the original index file with our own index file. Does that have any kind of a reset characteristic for it when it is used? One of the things that I did notice here is that it has this global selector about giving everything a web tap highlight color of invisible. That seems to be useful. What that does is it makes transparent link selection, adjust value. So if a person, perhaps depending on the web browser or device, if they tap and hold, they might get a selection. That is what seems that's what that seems to take care of. Uh, I don't see any other resets, though. Oh, I, there's, I guess here, uh, under body, WebKit touch, call out none. WebKit user select. Now the whole time, though, think about it this way. We've never used this, and we've been fine. So there's a way to think about it that way. But maybe these things were here for a reason. So maybe we do want to use them. So I am going to. Well, we're we're not there yet, but that's true. So what we'll do is, uh, I'm going to go ahead and copy. This is inside of the index CSS file in the CSS folder, line 19 through 21. 
notice we've usually seen our CSS say something like body and then the curly braces or maybe dot something in the curly braces or maybe pound something in the curly braces. Notice this one shows an asterisk which means apply to everything and notice it's the very first thing. So at the very beginning we're applying this um, this property here, WebKit tap highlight color invisible. Although it's specifically for WebKit browsers, and technically we're running this as uh, as a as a as a web app wrapped up in an, in a native app, so it might be useful to use. Those that's the underlying browser technology behind Google Chrome and Safari. So it's the it's no, the render no. and now Opera too. It's the rendering engine. It's the way that it's what basically translates the HTML into something that the web browser can display. I don't Chrome is using the one rendering engine. Opera Opera was using. Uh, no, do you see Opera or Chrome? Chrome? Oh, Chrome, Chrome. Sorry. Uh, good, good point. Maybe. Yeah, I think uh, Google is rendering uh, their own thing now, huh? Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yes. Since we don't reference this file, this index.css, in our script ref script source references at the beginning of our index file, wouldn't that mean that it's not being used at all? It's not being used at all, exactly. It was being used when we first created the project, when it was still the little mascot, remember? It, it said device ready. It was being used then, but we have not used it since then. Oh. But I will copy a few lines from this onto our current CSS file. So uh, copy that section and we are using Kodika EXT CSS. So from that one that we're not using, we're going to put it into at the very beginning. Put your custom code here, so I'll put it right at the beginning so that it takes place first. The index.css file also has these references to these WebKit items here. I'll, I'll copy those over too. Not the body, not anything else, just those lines, 24, 25, and 26. And then we'll need to create a body tag in our CSS file. So copy 24, 25, 26, and we will create a new body right after the asterisk. And inside of that body we'll paste. So obviously this is like this is like, I think about it at, at home. Um, no one likes to clean, but you have to do it once in a while, or else you'll get cockroaches. So here, you know, we're kind of cleaning up our code a little bit. You could probably be fine without doing any of this. But to be a little more efficient, we should do this. We should see what's not used anymore. We were writing code in different ways, and now we've got perhaps better ways, so we'll remove the old ways. And we've got anyway, right on the desktop, that backup there that we can always come back to. So besides that, Nothing else was really used. So once you've copied that from that index file, I will delete that. The, the CSS folder too. I suppose we could put, we should put our CSS files into the CSS folder, but then we'll have to rewrite our code that references it. We have to decide which is more important. So I'm just going to put my code in there and then just delete the whole CSS folder. It should all, in my case, it only contains the index file CSS that we never used. So I'm pretty confident deleting that.
And we've got an images folder and an image folder. some of the buttons and so forth that are used as part of the jQuery mobile yes. CSS. Yes, exactly. Images comes from jQuery mobile when we downloaded the zip file a long time ago. And it came with the uh, jQuery mobile files and the pictures, the icons, are all in images. Image, IMG, came with the Cordova example that we created a while ago. And I know that logo PNG was used before, um, which is this little guy, remember, the, um, the mascot. Um, that, this. And we're not using that anywhere in the HTML. It is being used as the icon of the app, but that is found elsewhere. It's over here outside of the assets folder. So I think we can clear out the whole image folder because Cordova is the same thing. And what is device here? Uh, that's a screenshot. So I'm like 97.5% sure that we can clean out this IMG file. If not, we'll just put it back from our backup. So image. Let's delete image. Not images. That'll be bad. IMG. And this index.js is a reference or was being used by the old index.js file. And that one doesn't have anything we're really using. It's got, you know, de add device, uh, the add event listener device ready, the on device ready function, etc. So we're not, we're implementing it in a different way. So this index. JS file we don't need, which we don't need the whole JS folder. And res is, uh, I think, a redundant folder because I haven't seen it used. This res folder has the icons for our app in the different sizes that we will talk about in the next class because we still have that little Cordova icon but these same files which we will do the correct way later are found in this res folder. This res folder has a bunch of things in here that we'll work with specifically what are the icons for the different sizes of our of our device. A small quality device will have a small image under for example the low quality folder and then a higher quality one will be in the high quality folder. So I'm pretty sure that this res folder doesn't do anything. It has those icons, but they're not being referenced by any of our HTML. So I'm going to re remove that res folder. Be careful, because there's two of them. The res folder in the WW folder, not the res folder outside. That would be bad. CSS, we want that, we want that, dir, we want that, index copy, we don't want that. That was uh, the one that had the original div data role equals header. And then we changed that to say um, section data role header, or whatever HTML5, semantic HTML5 we used. So this has got the old versions made with divs. So we'll just delete index, copy. And then also old index. I don't even remember what that one is. I remember that's the one that came with the um, with the Cordova, with the Cordova um, example. So we'll take out index copy and old index. Yes. Since we took out all the all the um, phone gap picture stuff, camera, do we not need we still need the Cordova JS? Definitely, because that still does other things. For example, we didn't take out open URL. That creates the um, in-app browser. 
which allows us to go look at other websites within our app. So that needs that needs that. And we didn't take out vibrate. That needs it too. So we didn't we didn't do a lot of fancy things with the app, but in order to do that, we need Cordova JS, and we've got at least two things that need it. We won't remove that. Of course, we'll leave these jQuery things here, main.js and master. Uh, I think those are also not referenced anywhere. Main.js, uh, this has examples. If you were poking around in there, you might have found it. These has ex th these have examples of all of the possible things that we could do with Cordova. Also, maybe it might be useful, but um, yeah, I'll leave that one. Oh, you can get it from backup. Yeah. True. That's a sure way to handle that, especially if it's a big size. That's a good point. Um, might as well take out things. Yeah, 5K. Um, yeah, um, let's take out the master CSS and the main JS. If we need them, we can bring them back. Main.js, master CSS. A lot less than before. We've only got Codica, those two Codica files, CSS and JS. Cordova, that's three. Dir, that's four. Index five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Right, did I count right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine actual files. And the images. And that's our whole project in the WW folder. In this inspector, is there a way to, uh, to view the uh, size of that? Is there a, uh, a property? Of Sizes of the files or the whole app? The folder that uh, contains them. Um, I would uh, right click properties and it should say. No, not here. It looks like it's giving us sizes for particular files, but not folders. Right there. Uh, there might be a column, you know, if we poke around somewhere here, we could show columns of things. <coughs> so I'm going to close that. So I think that's everything that we need. We've, uh, let me compare something here. The, the backup version and the one we cleaned out. Big difference. Uh, the backup version, uh, uh, 10.8 megs, and this cleaned up one, 4.27. Well, less than half. Not so many files different, but uh, chunky files. One at a time. Uh, go ahead. Oh, images. Yeah, it could be images. So, which particular ones? Um, probably those, those few of those images because the logo, we had two, two copies of those logos. Oh, and then we had the whole res folder with all of the sizes of possible icons. That's probably a lot in there. And they're PNG, so they'd be high quality 24-bit graphics. So again, this is, the, this is the part that it's good to do once in a while. You know, you want to wash the dishes once in a while, you want to clean this stuff out so that you're a little more efficient later. We're wrapping up the class now, and then when we come back next week, it'll be a brand new class. We're going to need to enroll again, and then we'll take it from here. I'm going to put these files in the network folder in just a moment. But um, again, if you got a little lost, well, that's why I'm putting it all in the in the network folder. And it was a matter of cleaning out things that don't seem to be that useful. And since I've done this a few times, I, I know which ones don't are not useful. You as a beginner compare my files with your files and it kind of makes a little sense.